23 in Humanity Today, we're looking at the Stone Age. And the reason why we call it the Stone Age, not the Iron Age or the Bronze Age, is because in the Stone Age, people didn't know about metals. They didn't know how to make tools out of anything other than stone. So it's called the Stone Age because they used stone. Last week, we looked at how a timeline was divided. And we said the timeline was divided into, well, these dates, BC dates, and these dates, AD dates. And they pivot, they change around the zero. And at zero, we said that Jesus Christ was born. If you carry on going this way in time, you come to the present, which is where we are, we're here. And if you go further back and back and back and back and back and back, you go further into the past. That's how the timeline works. The only trouble is that when you get to zero, the timeline kind of starts again. And it becomes a bit confusing. But we can kind of keep track of it with these two. You see, next in my timeline comes 400, but I've got two 400s. So in history, they came up with an idea. They said, well, if it's um, 400 this side, we're going to call that 400 BC. So we know it's that side of the timeline. Okay, so this one here would be 400 BC. So what would the other one be? The other one would be 400, um, that one would be Yep, 400 AD. But we don't put the AD after, we put the AD before. Okay, the AD goes there. We learnt about that last week because it's quite an important idea in history. Okay? Right, guys. Uh, the Stone Age is so long that they've had to divide it into little periods. And can I remind you that the Stone Age, in other words for stone, is lithic. Lithic and stone mean the same thing. So some people might even say it's the, the lithic age which basically means stone but in uh, I think it's probably Greek or possibly Latin okay and we divide the stone age into periods because it's so long uh, the one nearest to us is called the neolithic neo means new and lithic means stone the one in the middle is meso which means middle middle stone middle stone age and finally the word paleo means ancient really old millions of years old but they're not all the same um, the same length. Neolithic is just a short period in history. Mesolithic is mm, not much longer, relatively short. But the Paleolithic is massive. It's huge. Okay, so let's have a look at these on a timeline. To make our timeline for those periods, oh my goodness, we need to make our timeline a lot longer. So I'm going to get all these and I'm going to move them in one fast swoop. And I'm going to get zero. You don't belong there either at the minute. I've got to make my timeline a lot longer to show these other periods. So let's go to, um, let's add time to our timeline. Here we go. I've got to put so many more years, so many more centuries. In fact, it goes off the page, which is to be expected. Okay. Now my zero now is here. Okay. So my dates now are here. Now I would like you to make me one of these guys. It looks a bit crazy, but I'm going to show you how, how to make it simpler. These are all BC dates now. In fact, most of history is BC. So instead of counting in hundreds, I'm just going to mark on thousands this time. Otherwise, we'll go, we'll go blind with madness. So if that's zero, count backwards with me in hundreds. 100, 200, 300, 400. 500, 600, 700, 800, 900, 1,000. That's 1,000 BC. And we'll pop it there so we know what it is. Wow. And then I'm going to count it in hundreds again. Ready? 100, 1,100, 1,200, 12. Oh, we don't say it like that, do we? 1,100, 1,200, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. And then it's 20, 100, which is 2,000. You're going to do this at home, so make sure that you've uh, you've got your eyes peeled. Is it BC or AD? It's 2000. Yep, BC. If it would AD 2000, it would be um, the one near us. Let's count in hundreds again. Let's count in centuries. 2100, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, another 1000, which would be 3000. We call thousands of years, we call them millennia. So this is the... This is 3,000 years or, or three millennia. 
uh, BC again, I think it is, isn't it? Because it's that side of um, the timeline. Can we get another millennia in? Let's count, ready? 3,000, 100, 3,000, 200, 300, 400, 600, 700, 800, 900, another millennia, another thousand years. And this time, it's going to be 4,000. Okay, so I want you to make me one of these at home, this time counting in hundreds of years into the thousands. Now, I can't make my timeline much bigger because it's all going to drop off my page, but that's how long it needs to be to show the Mesolithic. Because the Mesolithic started around, mm, started around there in the middle of 2000, 2500, 2600. And it lasted, I'm going to try and colour them in. Can I colour them in? I'm hoping I can. It lasted, oh, it, it lasted that long. And I'm going to colour the Mesolithic in. What shall I colour it in? I'll colour it in, um, we'll go for, it's not Meso, sorry, it's the Neolithic. I'll colour it in red. So the red dates are the Mesolithic, no, the Neolithic, sorry. So the red ones are the Neolithic. And then before the Neolithic was the Mesolithic. So can I, oh, can't move that. Let's try and colour these in. So the Mesolithic was, oh, come on. The Mesolithic was, what colour we should give the Mesolithic? Mesolithic could be, um, we'll go for purple. Okay. So purple is the Mesolithic. And the red is the Neolithic. And there's quite a big change between this time and this time. And I'll be really honest with you, year three, we don't know an awful lot about these time periods, which makes you wonder why we're actually studying it at key stage two. However, the reason why they colour these in different times and, and call them different periods is because a big change happened. And the big change was around here. We've got evidence that suggests that people started settling down. People in really long, long, long time ago, they started to, to build villages and started to farm. In these times and further back, there's not that much evidence of human settlement. We know there were people around, but they were perhaps more nomadic. In other words, they moved around hunting and gathering, a little bit like um, ancient hunters but these people were probably the first farmers. No one exactly knows for sure, but we've just got a lot of evidence from the Neolithic. Okay, so that's why we, we've got different periods. We've got different sorts of evidence. I'd like you to make me one of these at home. I'd like you to make me a timeline that stretches from zero and goes all the way back to at least 4000 BC. And you can mark the every thousand years every millennia could you add on the neolithic which starts around 2500 and goes back to 4000 actually it finished there didn't it i'm thinking going backwards it started in 4000 and finished in 2600 and then the rest of it's neolithic we can't show the paleolithic because the timeline isn't long enough the paleolithic goes back and back and back and back that's your Humanity's task today is to make me one of those. Make me a timeline that goes back 4,000 years. Okay. There's an optional task, which is to visit this website here. And I'd like you to show you this one because it's kind of cool. It is called Our Warwickshire. And people have uploaded anything they've found in history from, from around Leamington Spa or at least essentially in, in Warwickshire. So when you go to this site, if you go to Warwickshire, go to time periods, hopefully. And then when you scroll down, you'll find that you've got all different sorts of periods in history. These are relatively new ones, but we need to go back right to uh, the end, which is Paleolithic and Neolithic. I wanted to show you this, this artifact here. This artifact, something that they found very close to us. When you look at this website, if you get a map view, it shows you where different things were found. And if I go to Leamington, there's loads of things found around Leamington. Most of them are flinty bits. 
and flint was the stone that they used. So if you look in here, you go to what did they find in Mighton? Oh, they found a flint. And a flint is a little bit of a rock, a special stone that makes itself very sharp when it's cut. But I wanted to show you um, that axe head because somebody was walking around between 4,000 years ago, no, um, between 400 BC, 8,000 years ago, around here. And they dropped, they dropped this. This is an example of a Paleolithic, come on, open, a Paleolithic axe head, or is it a spearhead? And they would have shaped it, it's taking a long time today, and they would have shaped it by hand. Okay, oh, and I can't get it to open, oh, there it is. So this is a piece of flint, and a piece of flint is a special stone that Paleolithic people, Stone Age people, would have sharpened to help them to make things and, and to cut things. And the strange thing about this stone is that the type of stone it is isn't found here, isn't found in this part of the country. This stone came from Wales, they think, because the rocks in Wales are made of the same sort of stone as this one. And what they think happened is that this rock would have come from Wales on the back of a glacier. And there was a time where the whole country was covered in ice. And on top of the glacier, rocks would travel, literally like a conveyor belt, they'd travel. And then when the glaciers melted, any of those traveling rocks would be dumped. And they think that maybe this rock traveled on the back of a glacier. And um, a prehistoric, um, Paleolithic person found it, said, oh, that would make a great axe because it's hard, and then um, turned it into an axe head. But that's a bit strange that it's not made from local stone. Okay. So that's something from the Paleolithic. Let's have a look at something from the Neolithic now. So if you go back to the main site, go to time periods, and then pick Neolithic, which is here. And then if we look at Leamington on a map, again, there are loads of things found locally from the Neolithic period. But I'd like you to take you to, uh, where's Leamington gone? Come back, Leamington. Where's it gone? There's Leamington. Loads of things found from the Neolithic. And I think perhaps there are more things because it's, um, it's not so far back in time. But can I take you to, oh, where's it gone again? We'll go to Bubbanall again. Is it Bubbanall? Yes. And this time, we start finding things called enclosures, which are basically fields, and also um, something called ring ditches. And this time in history, the Neolithic, people start settling down and they start building things. And where they build things, you can kind of see, and this is a photograph taken of, um, of a field, and sometimes, when you take pictures of fields in plains, you see strange shapes. And this is what we call a ring ditch. And this is evidence of there being a settlement or certainly a, a large building there in the past. And from looking around these ring ditches, archaeologists there and um, people who investigate ancient settlements, archaeologists can kind of work out where what time they were dug. And they worked out that in this part of Warwickshire, Where's it gone? Oh, it's disappeared. In this part of Warwickshire, well, I think it's gone now, that there must have been people living in the Neolithic age, probably um, as farmers. And the, and the reason why they make shapes is because um, ring ditches often have deeper soil um, soil depth, so the plants love them, so they show up. So there's more soil, so the plants are greener. Or, conversely, if there's rubble in the ground that Neolithic people have left, there's hardly any soil and those plants die those plants die first. So what you're seeing in a ring ditch is you're seeing here plants have got a lot more water because it's deeper. And then this one here, you're seeing plants that aren't managing very well because um, there's rubble in the ground. Okay, so when you have looked at this website, check out, um, check out those dates on your timeline perhaps. Perhaps add them on to where they belong. I'd like, like, I'd like to see your timelines this afternoon if possible, guys. Thank you.